Right. So welcome to my talk. Um, this morning I was having a bit of a dilemma about what to actually talk about. And I asked Phil, who's not in the room with us at the moment, which is rather unfortunate, but maybe someone, one of you could pass on to him that I actually took his advice. And I'm going to show you some photos of cute kittens and puppies, because, you know, that's cute. He also requested chickens. I'm afraid this is a hacker chicken, not a real chicken. Um, hmm? What was it? And he asked for bees, so there are bees too. He. Uh, sorry, Sean. But unfortunately, our, our ducks actually got stolen, so I have no photos of them. You didn't hear about this. Okay, someone broke into our chicken coop at Christmas last year and stole over all, all, all of our ducks, all four of them. Yeah, well, apparently there's some hungry people in UK. Okay, uh, so last time I did this talk was in 2014, and we've been doing some stuff on documentation since then. We've written new documentation, we've updated all documentation, reviewed some documentation, did a lot of editing, then some more editing, and then some more again. And we did a lot of As this is a state of the union, I'll just give you, I'll start by giving you an update. Um, so, we had three hacks in the last two years. This is actually kind of a little bit quiet for the documentation team. We usually have more hackfest than... I'll get to the reasoning for that in a little bit. Co-hosted document for experience in Cambridge 2015. I apparently didn't finish that slide. Ah, huh, funny. Right before Fosdem. And then Open Help in Cincinnati in... October. I won't say October, but I'm thinking September. Anyway, autumn 2015, and also, yeah. Hi, Alexander, speak up. When you say Cambridge, you mean the real Cambridge, right? I mean the one, in the in original, the one yeah, that okay. <laughs> Not the other. Okay, so uh, we decided to co-host Docs and Developer Experience here because we have a little bit of crossover in terms of people who want to attend Documentation Hackfest and Developer Experience Hackfest. Uh, there were quite a lot of people there for the Developer Experience. We had seven people from the documentation team, which is really awesome because that means we can actually get quite a lot of work done in one big push. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple of frowning people there. Well, there's one of who joined us. Um, they decided to sit with the documentation rather than the develop, developer experience people. And they gave us some really good input on our system administrator documentation, which was very helpful. That's what we were trying to push at that time. Um, so when we have our hackfests, we generally try to concentrate on one area. So for example, on developer documentation or on system administrator documentation, user documentation, well, we have the user documentation for the desktop itself, and also user documentation for the various applications. We try to pick one, and actually have a drive to get that into a really good state, so we can release it. Um, we were hosted by Collabora, and we ate lots of pizza. So, thank you to Collabora for hosting the two hackfests in their offices in Cambridge. I, I'm just, I'm just looking at this guy. He was like taking photos. <laughs> so next we had open help. This was about seven, eight months later. We did meet at Guadec as well, 2015, and we hacked together for a few days. But we didn't have the same sort of push to work on one thing, and we just got work done rather than actually got something into a really good state. Um, so open help, 2015 by this guy who is sitting right there and he's wearing a baseball cap because he took us to a ball game that was really fun even though it rained it was still amazing i recommend you guys go if you ever get the chance people because i assume all the um have already been it took a place in this lot yes it's always nighttime there like i've i've never seen daylight in cincinnati i've seen 
and that's about it. the rest of the time we just hack well, basically in a very lovely venue oh look there he is again he's getting all the photos isn't he um with guy there as well so at in cincinnati we again had about seven people from the documentation team different set of people and again we were able to work together and make a push what we actually did there was um reviewed all of our desktop help and actually pretty much updated all of it against the latest gnome which is quite a big undertaking it's about 350 pages give or take a few um so that took us three days of solid work there is three people in this room who can attest to that. Uh, yeah, and that's actually something that helps us keep the documentation up to date, because if you try to tackle something that's 350 pages big, then it's quite a difficult thing to do on your own, because there are a lot of different parts in different ways, and it, it's quite actually go through all of it and check if it's correct. You need a lot of people to sit down and do it in effort to well at least i feel that's how it is sean's frowning at me slightly do you agree sean yeah it really helps to sit down and do it in one go because then you can assign different areas to different people they have the responsibilities and you know all of it gets done we weren't hacking i think there's some data and when we weren't hacking apparently we were playing in um, so after we moved to Covington, which is Kentucky, so we start our um, conference in Ohio, and we moved to Kentucky because you know that's just what you do, obviously. Um, yeah, so that's lovely. Our hackfest. It was a lovely walk across the bridge to the venue, and thank you very much for organizing. Thank you for hosting us. If you guys ever get up, highly recommend it. Um, so this year, the start of the year, we also had the Developer Experience Hackfest. It wasn't a documentation team hackfest, but there were a few of us from the documentation team who went there because we have an interest in developer documentation. We have an interest in the tooling that we use in the website how, and how we do things on the website. Thank you to Fred up who looks after our websites for us. Um, it's a very big job and he is like a lifesaver when it comes to that. I think Fred's the only person who could make it work. Also, it just dies. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. Developer Experience Hackfest, we looked at how we do the website, how we update them, how we display our uh, developer documentation to the... Um, it was good fun. Um, and yeah, apart from the documentation team, we also tried to get Fred there because he is an honorary member and without him it just doesn't work. Okay, and um, we were hosted by at a co-work. Oh, I can't spell apparently. Hmm. Yeah, um, who have hosted uh, GNOME before? It's lovely. Okay, so what else have we been doing outside of the Hackfest? Well, we have some documentation for two new apps for Building and Polari. That all thanks to Alexandra here in the front row. I mean, it needs more work still, I hear, uh, but it's definitely a good start. It's been a few years since we've written new documentation for applications. Uh, and I'm, you're why that is. I'm guessing you are. You're all very quiet. So I'm going to and get on with it. Um, well, yeah, we haven't been able to do as much work outside of the Hackfests as we had in previous years. And that's because... Our, some of our team members had babies and grandchildren. So uh, congratulations to Jana, who's not here with us today. She had a baby recently. And um, also to Mike, who had a grandchild who lives in Japan. So it's quite a way to get there. Um, but we also have not taken on any interns. We, as the documentation team, used to take on between one and four interns per half year through the OPW. And that's something we haven't been able to do in recent years. So we haven't had that constant supply of new blood, people who are interested in documentation coming in, just writing for a few years or more. 
um, as the documentation team when we were doing internships, I think we had probably one of the highest success rates out of all teams in GNOME, I would say. We kept our people around for a long time. And generally, again, like when we've had interns uh, leave us, it's been either because they've gotten new jobs or because they've had babies, something like that. So it's not because they don't like us and they still occasionally come back. It's more because they've had other things which have come up in their lives. And um, a few of us also in the last couple of years got new jobs as well under the documentation team. So that's taken up a lot of our time and we haven't had as much time to hack on GNOME, which is unfortunate. Yeah, these things happen and things. They're looking for a new team member. But with GNOME 3, as we've in more recent years, as we've been working on documentation, one of the complaints I have heard from our team members is that we're writing the same documentation over and over again between each release, specifically for the application documentation. And that's because with GNOME 3, there have been a lot of iterations on the designs to improve them. Um, but it means every time the functionality or the UI changes, the documentation needs to be updated. And who's going to do that? Well, documentation team, of course. Um, there's a few things we've tried to do to improve that. But I also want to hear what you guys think as well. Um, one of the things I tried to do was I talked to developers who were working on these applications. Um, we got them to file bugs against the documentation whenever the functionality changed or, or the UI changed and make those bugs detailed and explain what's actually changed so that it's easier for us to reproduce them and to update documentation. That's helped a fair bit. Not all the developers in GNOME do that, but a lot, which is really great. Um, I put from you guys at this point, what do you think we can do to actually make that workflow easier um, keep people motivated about updating documentation when it's changing quite on a regular basis. Uh, first, I have to say uh, thank you for all the work you're doing. Uh, I guess we couldn't do it without you. Uh, and about uh, this, those UI changes and the stuff, I guess one could uh, actually automate uh, uh, or have some procedure uh, so automatically uh, start uh, those applications and uh, if uh, the application changes from some uh, screenshot that is uh, within the system uh, one a person, maybe the maintainer could be notified hey, the UI changed is there something the documentation team or is there some documentation that needs to be changed mm -hmm. and uh, maybe just a hint uh, at this, so if we, we remove some uh, some button or something that would would be apparent in the screenshot, or if you're not doing screenshots, then maybe uh, one could even expect um, inspect the the UI tree uh, with some introspection, some inspector stuff, um, and if this changes, yeah, then uh, somebody could be notified. So this could really be automated, and uh, so the maintainers uh, or the programmers don't have to think about this all the time, and they only get notified if they really change something yeah um, so there has actually been discussion before about doing some automation because we uh, take screenshots we do use screenshots and some documentation we do try to keep them to a minimum because they need to be translated uh, the documentation I think is translated into about 20 languages or so relatively well and very well into about three or four the problem with the translation is what I'm post next is that um, it's a lot of work compared to the UI. Documentation is a lot of work because it's a lot of prose. Um, so one of the things that would be nice to have is actually a tool which can retake the screenshots and update them automatically. This is something we talked about a couple of years ago, but we haven't had anyone step forward to do the work. Over to Sean. Um, so on, on that subject, um, uh, this is something I've toyed with. It's actually quite difficult to uh, automatically test if instructions are correct because they're written in English prose and um, that's a difficult thing to do. Um, and of course there is the additional issue of um, 
new features, new functionality is added. So it's not just a matter of checking old pages, but you know what new stuff do we have to do? But one of the things that I've I've toyed with um, is crowdsourcing, uh, reviewing for correctness, to where. Um, you would have a site that would basically put up, here's our 350 pages, and I'm just going to flash one at you, and I want you to read it, try doing what it says, and then you just click a button saying, yes, this is still correct, no, somebody go fix it. Uh, and so you just kind of get this very easy way that somebody could contribute just by, you know, go to that website, go, take five, take five minutes. <clears throat> anyway, take five minutes to go through, you know, some random collection. Uh, I think that would be interesting. Um, I think that could be a weekend hack for anyone who wants to do a cool weekend hack. You have to gamify this with batches and everything. Yes, yes, yes. Now it's a, a little bit more than a weekend hack. But yes, that would be cool, actually. At the same time, in batches or something like that. Uh, just direct response. I think that's the case for uh, support Mozilla.org that we have. It was this article helpful. Yes, no button at the bottom, and uh, they just simply have data. And when when it drops from eighty percent to twenty, it means like that page needs an update. Yeah. I wonder what are your thoughts on uh, making application developers the primary, primarily responsible person for their own documentation and restricting the scope of the documentation team to just reviewing changes made to the documentation by those app developers? So, for best, uh, sorry, uh, best documentation is generally written by people who know how to write well. And we have quite a diverse community, and we do have people in the community who can write well, but we also have a lot of people who are not used to writing prose. Um, and from the documentation team point of view, I, I've seen documentation written by developers. In some cases, it was actually impossible for me to figure out what they were trying to do. So if there is a developer who can write good documentation, I would welcome to, them to the team with open arms, and I would totally be happy for them to do their own documentation. And we will provide reviewers for them. But many developers prefer to leave this in our care because they just don't want to do it as well. Documentation tends to come as an afterthought for many people, which is a shame. It should I personally feel it should be written alongside any application development or the desktop development or anything like that. Um, but the same goes for user documentation and also developer documentation. And for user documentation, we, as the documentation team, while we're testing it and while we're writing the um, documentation for the application, we actually do usability testing at the same time and we report functionality problems. For example, if I try to document how to add a bookmark in Epiphany or something like that. Sorry, random example. I actually saw something about this the other day. Um, then uh, I will try to do that, and if I find that difficult personally, then I will follow back saying, this is difficult, maybe it should be done this other way, which might be simpler for the user or more intuitive. So there is also the added benefit that we help develop application developers develop their applications in a better, better way. As a follow-up, as a follow-up, uh, I'd suggest that we could... Um make it more clear to application developers that perhaps they need to inform the documentation team then, at least when there are major UI changes, because that's not something that's uh, happening very often right now. That's not something developers are told. It's not part of the yeah. culture here in Gnome. I mean, it would be great if developers filed bugs against the documentation in their applications. And yeah, we should definitely do that. Any other questions, comments on this topic? Yeah, I've had. I just saw two hands do that, um, but they made their way down again. No, okay. Well, moving on then. Well, how can you guys help? I actually want all of you to help us with the documentation, as you were saying yourself, Michael, that we want as many people as possibly. Um, you guys can help us write documentation. Um, if, if you don't like writing, you can report bugs and. 
you can provide patches. We patches are always welcome on our team. It does sometimes take a little while to review them because we don't have as many people active as we would like to have. So be patient or bring us an IRC. And um, you can actually use documentation. I have seen so many times on GNOME Hackers a developer saying, oh, how do I do this thing when this application that changed in this release? And I've looked at it and I thought, I actually documented that. That's If you press F1, you will actually get two instructions on how to do that thing you're asking about. It's a habit that people seem to have gotten into, like not checking the actual documentation from years of experiencing bad documentation. And it would be really nice if people could actually break out of that and like try the documentation first. And if it doesn't help you, file a bug. It's the same as with code. You try the application, you try whatever you want to use. If it doesn't work, you file a bug. Sometimes you submit a fix. Documentation works the same way. So I would like all of you to, when you next need to do something and you can't figure out how to do it, instead of Googling, maybe try hitting the F1 button. Have a look to see if there's something documented there which can help you with what you're trying to do. A lot of our documentation in GNOME is uh, guides-based. So we have guides on how to achieve something, like how to get to a specific end goal rather than how to use the UI. And this is something that changed when GNOME 3 came out. We actually rewrote pretty much all of our documentation to be like that. And hopefully that's easier for people to use. So from tomorrow, we're going to be having Hackfests. If you guys want to learn how to write documentation, how we work, then come and join us. Everyone is welcome. Um, you should talk to us about what you would like to see in documentation. If you want to improve our tools, come talk to us about that as well. Hopefully Fred will join us and he, if you, anyone has any questions about the website. Um, and Sean and pa uh, Peter and Alexander maybe will be there as well. So there's a few of us. So if you're interested in documentation, do come find us. And if you don't have time to come and see us tomorrow or in the next few days until the end of Guadic, then you can always find us on IRC as well. And we're quite a friendly bunch, so feel free to ask like whatever you want, basically. Okay, and um, a big thank you to Collabora for my time here. Uh, it's been really awesome that I've been able to come here and actually talk to you guys rather than be sitting at work um, writing various documents. And um, thank you to you guys for coming to Guadec and for actually talking to me. Thank you. Um. Uh, I, I guess maybe this is, I'm just wondering if um, the user help have a search provider in the shell? No. Okay. And, um, no, we've gone back and forth about how... We've talked about it and it's entirely doable. Uh, Inside of the help viewer, by the way, the search is very good, I'm just saying. Um, we've talked about whether to have a search provider and whether that would clutter up the shell versus, um, uh, you know, providing useful results, whether we should provide results just for the core GNOME help versus applications. I think for applications, it's probably the wrong choice because you don't want to, like, search for network and then get, I don't know, Firefox's stuff coming, you know, right? It's not the right thing. Uh, I think that's still an open question and it's it's possibly something that we could do, but no, not right now. Uh, it may be a good idea to limit the search to the applications that are currently open so that to avoid the clutter. Okay, uh, yeah, I was just uh, thinking since like, uh, like as you also say, people have gotten very used to using the internet for searching, so having 
uh, it could also be like you have an epiphany uh, that it randomly also searches like the local help rather than the help that you get from the outside the internet. I don't know, but uh, yeah, so so that uh, t- 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 people realize that the the offline help that provide is also a useful source for yeah, yeah. for finding an answer. <laughs> So in my, my talk the other day, I actually left out one application that I do use from GNOME, which is events, which I use quite a bit. Um, I've found problems in the events documentation, which I've confirmed with the events developers, uh, uh, the documentation is incorrect. Uh, the reason I didn't submit a patch, because is where I found it, was on the GNOME help. And the only thing on the GNOME help on the website, and the only thing it has is a link to send an email to docs feedback. Is that really how you want bug reports? And if not, why not at the bottom of every page on the help have a link? I mean, it, not everybody will use it. Some people just use the email version, but I would have liked, I would have happily submitted a patch if I could have clicked in just one or two clicks gotten to the repository that matches the help.gnome.org website. So since about 2011, we actually had that page which you're asking for in the documentation. But, at least to my knowledge, we actually never had anyone going through with submitting a patch. So eventually, um, people, the members of the documentation team just didn't start, include it anymore. And the reason we added the um, send an email button is to encourage the average user to report problems to us because we don't always know about the problems we have quite literally thousands of pages of documentation. But you actually made quite a good suggestion. So maybe we should, in addition to that, add a link to provide the patch for this um, page. I mean, ideally what I want to see is for someone to be able to click an edit button on that page, make the fix themselves, click submit, and have that emailed to the documentation team for review. Like that's what I actually personally want to see. We have time for one last question, and it's going to be Sean. Oh, no, it's not. No, no. Go to him. Go to anyone but me. And it's going to be this man. Could we have something that Microsoft has done for many years in their documentation and have buttons? Was this helpful? Yes, no, comment. And if you have a lot of no at some point, even if people don't, clicking no is like a half a second. And then you will see, oh, there are lots of problems in this page, including yes. in the help. I would love to have that. Please implement it. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone.